In this presentation, we will explore nerves as tissue components of movement. First, to look at the neural locomotor pathways in the equine. Tracking from the brain, there are cranial nerves, and you will note how challenging it is to avoid irritating these nerves with a bridle. The spinal cord leaves the brain and is contained within the vertebrae for protection. It then branches off to the thoracic limbs, then to the pelvic limbs. Note that the vagus and accessory cranial nerves exit the brain region to operate the head flexing for an instantaneous flight response and the vagus nerve monitoring organ function. The brachial plexus houses the thoracic, thoracodorsal, pectoral, musculocutaneous, ulna, median and radial nerves. The lumbar plexus is the origin of the ilioinguinal, genitofemoral, femoral, ischiatic, sacral and caudal nerves. The nervous system is the information superhighway of the body. It is a vast array of acutely sensitive electrochemical cables, controlling, regulating and maintaining all body systems. Facilitating information flow within and between those body systems. Neurological language is chemically coded electrical impulses that stimulate activity such as temperature, hormonal, memory and movement pattern control. And the image shows a dissected equine lower limb and this is the hoof and the flexor tendons. It's the digital nerve branching off from the median nerve and frequently a target for nerve blocking to abolish pain to structures along that nerve pathway in a lameness assessment. The three basic components of the nervous system or the systems within the systems are the central, autonomic and sympathetic nervous systems. The central nervous system, also known as the somatic nervous system, consists of the brain and the spinal cord. And this senses the requirement for and to initiate all voluntary activity, but this includes reflexive movement, not requiring the brain for conscious input, instead confined to immediate spinal level control. So for voluntary movement, we have nerves serving muscles. The involuntary autonomic system connects the brain to organs, maintaining homeostasis and all life-giving mechanisms such as breathing and heart rate. It regulates the sympathetic and parasympathetic components of its system. The sympathetic nervous system controlling the fight or flight response and the parasympathetic system returning the body to normal resting state when the threat has subsided. All systems have sensory and related motor nerves so that sensory information can be appropriately acted upon. Autonomic nervous system, nerves to 
the organs. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves all originating from within the brain and the image shows a cartoon of the head, neck and shoulders to show the functions of the cranial nerves. Olfactory or smell, number one. Optic or vision, number two. Ocular motor, eyelid and eye movement. That's up here with the eyebrows. Trochlea, eye movement. Trigeminal, five, chewing and facial movement. You can see this goes around like a mouth. Number six, abducens or lateral eye movement. Number seven, up here, facial movement, of which the trigeminal nerve is not involved with. Eight, vestibulocochlea, the ears, hearing and balance. Glossopharyngeal, nine, tongue movement and it senses carotid blood pressure or blood from the carotid artery in the neck. The vagus nerve, 10, and it's put down here because it mediates between organs and the central nervous system involved with homeostasis and also some taste. 11 is the accessory, swallowing, trapezius and sternocleidomastoid, so the head movers. Hypoglossal or tongue is the 12th one and that's tongue movement. The issue for the cranial nerves and the equine is that bridles are fitted directly over many of the superficial cranial nerves as you can see here and there is also a nerve serving the soft tissue behind the ears and the trend for securing nose bands so tightly for control can therefore be reliably considered abusive in terms of saddle fit there are superficial nerve pathways in the wither region where stallions grip with their teeth to immobilize the mare for breeding. Therefore, any contact with the saddle panels here may inhibit forward movement in the ridden horse as advocated by saddle maker Jochen Schleser. Also the pectoral region where horses can be highly reactive to being girthed. Gait is controlled with both voluntary and involuntary information processing, and that is conscious with psychological input from the brain and subconscious with reflexive movement patterns generated within the spinal cord. Efficient central gait pattern generators control limb placement so that movement becomes largely automated by the brain after it has been learned. And training is thus always psychological and physical. And the rider should not always be micromanaging them. And with thoughtful training that carefully and progressively promotes central pattern generators, this will enable ridden gait to, in time, come naturally to the horse. Training is all about developing competition gait to become a set of subconscious movement patterns so as to leave brain space for precision advanced moves. And be mindful that compensatory gait is wired with these 
central pattern generators and would in many cases need considerable retraining to modify even when restrictions are resolved. The quick fix is non-existent for the training of sustained quality gait and movement. Beyond the basic neuromotor system guiding selection and control, movement represents a whole body physiological change in state and it can have many complex sensory feed forward and feedback components involving vision, hearing, vestibular balance, heart and breathing rates, temperature control and bone loading dynamics not least the processing of resultant changes in blood chemistry and memory retention. And locomotion must therefore be considered as an entire body process involving tissue conditioning on many levels. Proprioception is a crucial component of the body's execution of movement. And the body has an acute perception of joint positioning for the purpose of balance without the use of vision. It is the basis of acquiring movement patterns as well as a feedback mechanism for fine tuning of joint movements. It has a feed forward mechanism to aid body placement before it occurs. And with proprioception, effective coordination to produce controlled voluntary motion could not occur. So if we look at this horse training over poles and the lesson is foot placement and often the horse will kick the poles because it has to learn where they are. The eyes passing over in front of the feet before the feet recognises or recalls that there is an obstacle somewhere on the ground. So it's important to develop proprioceptive awareness in the horse with ground contact and the feet. Sensory receptors located in the skin are primarily Pacini corpuscles detecting pressure, Ruffini endings detecting shear forces between fascial layers, free nerve endings or nociceptors occurring throughout the body and detecting pain. Mechanoreceptors, which are Golgi tendon organs and muscle spindles occurring in the musculoskeletal system for moderation of posture and locomotion. The image shows the location of Golgi tendon organs and muscle spindles and how they are stimulated to send information to nerve cell synapses in the spinal cord to prompt an appropriate motor response back to the muscle for actioning. So here and back to here. The Golgi tendon organs cited in tendons are stimulated by slow static stretching and muscle spindles in muscles stimulated by fast dynamic stretching are reflexively protective to help prevent joint injury. They trigger an autogenic inhibition of the muscle called a myotactic reflex to stimulate associated muscles to involuntarily relax and lengthen to prevent acute strain of the muscle joint complex, specifically protecting muscle and joint complex from acute extension beyond normal range of motion. And they detect both absolute and rates of change in muscle stretch tension to regulate contraction force. 
In other words, they constantly advise the brain of the body's movements by monitoring degree of stretch of the structures they populate. And this is the basis of muscle tone. These mechanoreceptors would be stimulated when landing from a jump, for example. The horse would have made an advanced judgment about the ground surface for landing. If it happened to unexpectedly land on an unstable surface that increases fetlock extension, this information would instantaneously trigger mechanoreceptors to initiate a stabilizing muscle group recruitment pattern in the thoracic limbs for modified pelvic limb placement. And balance would hopefully be restored by the time the hind limbs reach the ground. Experiential training and conditioning would help to optimise this strategy so that potentially fewer mistakes would be made by the horse as it progresses through training. Let's take a look at this horse and rider combination for some examples of the neurological systems at work. And this combination has just turned through a corner, so we'll be having to alter its balance. As you can see, it's slightly tilted. Therefore, the mechanoreceptors surrounding the joint complexes will have detected that change and will send messages to the muscles to alter their action to straighten the body. The rider is getting feedback from the horse and uses the reins to the bit to communicate. The cranial nerves are processing that information and the horse opens and closes its mouth, possibly in response to some restriction to the bit, which is making its way out of the side of the mouth. To summarise what we've covered in tissue components of movement, the muscle, tendon, bone, joint complex includes neurological components and a blood supply. The musculotendinous junction of a muscle tendon unit contains components of both tissue types, but the structural properties and functions of neither. That makes them weak. Fascia is a connective tissue that connects tissue on many levels. Muscles are a dynamic body tissue with many mechanical properties, action of which is facilitated by placement, direction and angle. And finally, nerves control and regulate every aspect of the living body and strategize to protect the body from catastrophic harm as best it can.